Hey y'all, welcome back to Kelly's Kitchen. So today is Saturday, which means it is Disney dinner and a movie night. So tonight's movie is Brave. Uh, that's what was drawn out of our handy dandy bag. So if y'all haven't seen Brave, Brave is based in Scotland. So going off that theme, um, the dinner tonight is gonna be bangers and mash, which is grilled bratwurst. And I'm making a homemade mashed potatoes. And then I'm gonna make an onion gravy to go on top of all of it. And then we also have some sauerkraut we're gonna throw in there too. Uh, just because sauerkraut goes with brats, I know it's more German, but it just, we wanted to use up the sauerkraut we have. Um, and also with that, uh, for the beverages that going with the movie, um, I decided to kind of go fairly traditional back in that time. Um, they basically drank, you know, beer or wine, right? So we went on a little, Easter egg hunt, I guess you could say. And we did find some Scottish beers. Uh, these are both Bellhaven Scottish beers. We got them at uh, Total Wine. So we got those for Andrew to try. Oh yeah, they were four packs, so the others are in the fridge. Um, now, Total Wine didn't have any Scottish wines, so that kind of stunk. Um, I did already have on hand my favorite Pinot Noir, uh, the Mayomi one, which is a California wine, it's not a Scottish wine, but um, if you think back in older times, usually red wine is what you saw. Um, but I did want to get me something too, you know, because why not? Um, so this is definitely not Scottish, but they did have German wine. So I got me this German Riesling, um, which, I mean, it's a white wine, so not as traditional back then. But I wanted to try it, so I got me that, and I'm really excited. So... Without further ado, let's get starter, started on the fingers and mash. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and dice up uh, my potatoes. I already washed them. Uh, these are just golden potatoes. It's the last of the ones I had left. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use all those because there's five brats and I wanna make sure we have plenty of mashed potatoes because I do want leftovers of this. All right, so I got my potatoes all chopped up into this big pot. I'm gonna go ahead and cover it in water, add some salt uh, to taste. Uh, just that way the salt kind of infuses into potatoes while they're cooking. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a bring them to a bowl and let them start cooking while I slice up my onion. All right, got my onion all sliced up here. So now we're gonna go ahead and move over to the stove and start cooking. All right, so my potatoes are, are starting to boil, and I have here on a uh, medium high heat, I have about two tablespoons of olive oil that I'm just heating this large skillet. It's nice and hot, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in my brats. So we're just gonna put this in there because we wanna get a nice sear on each side and make sure they're thoroughly cooked. All right, so I got them in there, and then move that oil around. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover them, just so they sear and kind of steam in there to make sure they get nice and cooked. And once it's ready to flip them, I will let y'all know. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip these sausages. I mean, brought you know, same thing. They are popping. Woo. All right. Ooh, look at that color, beautiful. Ooh. I definitely recommend longer tongs than I am using. Ooh. All right. I already turned it down a little bit because it is a little angry. <gasps> Shut that, okay. Some angry bratwurst. All right, turn it down a little bit more. <laughs> turn it down to more of a low. All right, let those, uh, Finish getting a color on the other side, and then I had to turn down my water because it got angry too. Let me tell you, over here, sorry, over bowling. You know it happens. I got distracted, y'all. That's why. Uh, forgive me. Um, I was. Uh, I went ahead and poured Andrew a beer and one of his cold steins, and I went ahead and poured me a glass of that German Riesling, and I'm about to try it. Okay, y'all can try this with me. Here is the German. Riesling. Mm, that's good. Um, so this kind, 
So I didn't know about Riesling. There's different levels of dryness and sweetness to it, um, kind of like with wine in general. Um, but Riesling itself has different variations. So you have like your drier Riesling, which I forget what it is called, but I know your sweeter Riesling is called an Auslais. Um, so if you like a sweeter wine, but you don't want it necessarily as sweet as Moscato, you're trying to get kind of away from the Moscato, but you want to try like, you know, more drier wines, move up to a Riesling and get the Auslais. So any wines, A-U-S-L-E-S-E, -S -S -E, I believe is how you spell it. Um, this one didn't say Auslais on it, but it had like a meter on the back, it said dry to sweet, one, two, three, four, and it was another three, so I knew it was that. Um, yes, I do drink the Pinot Noir, um, which is a dry red. I, um, when it comes to whites, I like sweeter whites. When it comes to reds, I like them drier. And now I've given you all a little tidbit on wine. You're welcome. Okay, so um, I'm just going to let this brown up a little bit more. And I'm going to check my potatoes and then let's see where we're at. Okay, so the potatoes are still going, but these brats are browned on both sides. So I want to go ahead and remove them from the skillet because oops, this is where I'm going to make my uh, gravy. So I want to go ahead and take... The sausage is just out so I can start that process. Put those aside over there. And I'm going to throw into my hot, hot oil. Um, actually, I'm going to wait on that part. Don't mind me. I'm going to throw in some onion. <laughs> throw that onion in there. Ooh. All right. So I want to start to caramelize these. Um, before I start actually making the gravy. So I'm just going to toss them around. And I might turn the heat up a little bit. I turned it down some because those, those brats will get angry. I think y'all saw I got grease everywhere. It's okay though. It's just flavor. Just more, more flavor. More, more fun. It's like the fireworks of meat. I didn't hear that. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> so now I'm just going to caramelize these up. And once these get nice and um, wilted, cooked, then we'll start on the gravy. And while the onions are caramelizing, I'm going to go ahead and re reference the um, sauerkraut mise in. If y'all remember my Reuben burger recipe, um, this is the sauerkraut I had used. I just got it at Walmart. It was like a dollar something. So I'm just going to, um, in order to use it up, because I don't want. It's to go to waste. Um, it'll last a minute because it's like, you know, pickled, whatever. Um, but we don't cook a lot of things, or I don't cook a lot of things that involves you can using sauerkraut. So, since I'm making brats, sorry, the onions are popping at me. I'm just talking over them. Um, we're going to go ahead and use some of the sauerkraut just to help use it. Again, help minimizing waste. Um, Y'all will find through these cooking episodes that I do for y'all that a lot of it is all about minimalizing waste and using up all the ingredients that I buy. Um, my fridge and freezer is always stocked on Fridays, but come Friday morning, like Friday evening I stock it, come Friday morning, it's basically bare uh, because of using everything that I have bought. Um, it just makes me feel better, like I'm doing better with the world or something. World's a mess. Might as well add a little help, right? Anyways, I'm going to finish letting this caramelize. Alright, now that my onions have this nice, beautiful color on them, they're looking real good. They smell amazing. I don't know about y'all, but I love the smell of onion cooking. It's, it's delicious. I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and add in about four tablespoons of butter, which is going to be a quarter cup or half a stick. Throw that in there. I'm just going to get that nice and melted. I'll bring it back once it melts. I don't think I want to watch it melt. Alright, butter is all melted now. So now I'm going to add in four tablespoons of flour. Uh, general rule of thumb that I always follow 
one tablespoon of flour to one tablespoon of butter or oil, whatever you're using. It's a pretty good rule of thumb to follow, just in case you never know how much to use. That helps. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mix that flour all in. I'm gonna put the onions, I'm gonna absorb that butter. Basically the start of a roux, right? A real roux, you let it get nice and dark. That's how you do a gumbo. Anyways, we'll get to that later on in the season. <laughs> All right, so got that nice and absorbed. And then we're gonna go in with some beef broth, okay? Now, of course, I just bought the Walmart brand. You can buy Swanson. You can use homemade, whatever makes your little heart happy. But again, I try to cut costs where I can because I tend to be a pretty bougie cook. All right, so I'm just gonna whisk. Not really whisk, because I'm not using whisk, but I'm just gonna mix the beef broth in. This is 14.5 ounces. I'm gonna use, which is almost two cups right i'm gonna go ahead and use the whole thing actually i have no use for the rest of this beef broth so i'm gonna use the whole thing because going off the math from yesterday's gravy if you watched yesterday's video it was what three tablespoons three of flour three tablespoons of butter and one and a half cups of chicken stock so this is 14 and a half ounces, so almost two cups to six. And I know that's like, oh, that math doesn't make sense. I know the math doesn't make sense. It's okay. Trust the process. Um, that's why I use the whole thing. Just going to whisk that in, but we're going to add a little bit more liquid to this in a different way. And that's why I'm saying trust the process. So going to add to this to season it up. A few dashes of Worcestershire. Um, I, I I don't know if you can rewind and count those <laughs> a few dashes. Probably like one or two. Um, probably like one tablespoon. Let's go with one tablespoon, one and a half tablespoons. And get that whisked in there. I personally find Worcestershire goes really good with anything like pork or even beef based. And this is a beef broth, so it just goes. All right, so I got that whisked in there. And we're going to add in a wee bit of garlic powder, about a teaspoon. Then add in about a teaspoon of ground black pepper. And about a teaspoon of dried thyme. Thyme does a really good complement with beef and beef broth, by the way. Okay, so I'm just going to mix that in. I'm going to hold off on salt for a second. Again, as I told you before, I like to taste it before I add any salt. Because you got the salt from the butter, you got the salt from the broth. And I just want to make sure I don't make this too salty. So, mix that up. And then we're gonna take a spoon, which yes, this was my flour spoon. I'm just gonna get that flour off there. Okay. Take a little taste. It's so flavorful, y'all. I don't even think it needs any salt, if I'm being honest. I think it's perfect as is. I don't like a lot of salt in my food, so FYI. <laughs> Let me do a little taste again. Hang on. Yeah, it doesn't need salt. Perfect. All right. So, I got my gravy mostly made. I wanted a runny gravy like this, right? Because I want it to droop or drip all over the mashed potatoes, get ice in there, all over the brats. So, now that, that is basically done gravy part I'm just gonna add my brats back to it 
All right, so just whisking this around again. See how it's gotten much thicker? It's doing good, my dears. That Worcestershire really added a nice, wonderful flavor to it. Okay, so now we're just gonna drop our beautiful little brats right into this gravy just so they cook right into it. And if the brats need a little bit more cooking, then they'll get done in here. It's wonderful. And I'm just gonna put some of this broth and onions right on top of them. Just go ahead and get them coated. Because why not, right? The flavor all over those beautiful brats. I personally love brats. If you don't like brats, um, but you want to do something like this, you can use any sausage that you prefer. Um, just wanted to use brats more traditional. I'm gonna I'm gonna pour in. This is that a uh, brat juice. I just wanted to pour it in there and kind of whisk it around just to give a little additional flavor to the gravy. All right, I have this um, skillet down to low. I'm just gonna cover that and let it chill while I wait on the potatoes to finish. Okay, my potatoes are done, so I'm gonna go ahead and get them drained and let's start making some mashed potatoes. All right, I got those drained. I went ahead and turned my um, stove top down to low for those just to keep them warm. I'm gonna throw in one whole stick of butter. Yes, one whole stick, okay? We, we want the mashed potatoes to taste good, right? So in a whole stick. And I'm just taking my potato masher, I'm just gonna go ahead and start mashing them up and let that butter start melting. Ooh, that steam is hot. All right. And then you can get these as mashed as you want. I personally prefer lumps in my potatoes. Um, I think the reason I prefer lumps and homemade mashed potatoes is because I kind of grew up on instant <laughs> and which were very smooth and baby food like. And anytime homemade mashed potatoes were made, which was rare, they had lumps in them. And that's how I knew <laughs> they were homemade um, because not to throw any shade, but based off flavor, you couldn't really tell. But anyways, <laughs> Y'all didn't hear that from me. All right, so just gonna mash it's all in. So that's how. I, anyways, that's how I differentiate it. So I, by same token, I make my mashed potatoes um, pretty lumpy. Sometimes I get them a little bit more fine than others, but I do. I don't know. I like a lump of potato when I bite it in my mashed potatoes. I think it's lovely. Some people don't, and so they, you know. Take them out. Sorry, I burned my hand on the side. I'm fine. No worries. Um, and then, yes, I leave the skins in. Um, that's another way I know that they're... I like to do them. Um, you could, of course, use russet potatoes, which I just bought some of those. I just tend to use red or gold. Um, but I did buy russet this grocery store around because I got them at Tom Thumb for 78 cents. So if you're watching this now and you're near Tom Thumb... Uh, with your member cards, they're seven a, a five pound bag, seventy eight cents until the fourteenth. You're welcome. All right, so got that all mashed, butter's melted. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in. This is the rest of that evaporated milk that I had opened and made mashed potatoes a couple days ago um, when I did the pork chops. So this is the leftover evaporated milk. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour the rest of that in there because gonna need it all. I just throw that in the sink. I'm just gonna start stirring slowly so I don't slosh it everywhere. The evaporated milk into the potatoes. If you're wondering why I use evaporated milk, one, evaporated milk is like cheap. It's a few cents in the baking aisle. It's like 78 cents, I think, for a can. It hangs out of your pantry, so it lasts like a while. So don't worry about the milk going bad. So that's wonderful. Um, it gives a nice creamy and kind of a sweetness to the mashed potatoes that I enjoy. So that's why I do that. 
It's just smart. Anyways, so um, ground black pepper. We're going to add in a few teaspoons of that. Again, I don't measure that. Probably, it's probably closer to a tablespoon, but that's fine. Um, so garlic powder, because I like a garlic flavor to my potatoes. Probably about a teaspoon. And then I like to add a few dashes of ground white pepper. Again, I just think it adds a nice, nice little difference to it. And then we're gonna add in about a teaspoon of salt to start. Um, and I'm gonna mix it together and taste it and adjust the garlic powder, the pepper, and the salt to my liking. Which my liking is also my husband's liking. Don't worry, I'm not forcing him to eat food he doesn't like. It's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, go hurt him, he chuckled in the background. All right, so I got that mix. I'm gonna take it and give it a little taste. Mm. It's good though. Perfect on flavor. Um, since I salted the potatoes while boiling them, they didn't need that much salt, so that teaspoon was plenty. Um, if people like saltier food, you can make it saltier. I just like it like that. So, mashed potatoes are done. Brats and onion gravy are done. So I'm going to turn off my stove. And now we're going to go ahead and plate it up. All right, y'all. And here you have bangers and mash with the onion gravy top of sauerkraut. Enjoy.